And let's welcome to the stage one of my best friends in this world, Sue Hitzman. Thanks so much for everything. I appreciate it. So first, are you guys ready to geek out with me? Yeah. I'm so happy because this is like stuff I love talking about. But seeing he's talked about this, I thought maybe let me just share a story because I think a lot of you guys can resonate with this. So, how, you know, how do you get here, right? Like, how, what is the journey that gets you here? And for me, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I've got a worldwide business, too. And my whole journey started when I was 11 years old. My great-grandmother, who was the spry lady who loved me, uh, one day I went back to see her, and she didn't know who I was. She was in an old folks' home, and she could only talk Italian. She would only speak Italian. And I said to my aunt, what happened to great-grandma? And she said, she just got old. I was like, are you gonna get old? She said, yeah. I was like, am I gonna get old? She says, yeah. I go, well, how do you stop that from happening? And she says, you don't. And I was like, well, there's gotta be a way. And what epitomized health and wellness when I was a kid were Jack LaLanne and Jane Fonda. So I bought in really fast, right? If you eat right and you exercise, you're gonna lead an active, healthy, pain-free life. I don't know where I got that pain-free idea, because that's the dirty little secret of fitness, is everybody's injured in fitness and has a lot of pain. So I had advanced certifications in all sorts of uh, hands-on therapeutic techniques, mostly working with high-performance athletes, getting them back out on the field after injury is really great. I had a great knack at this. And then 28 years old, I woke up one day and the bottom of my foot hurt me. And I thought, mm, I must have stepped on a piece of glass. Uh, and what started out as diagnosed as plantar fasciitis, do we know what this is? Right? It quickly turned into this body-wide searing pain. I mean, I was exhausted all the time. I couldn't get out of bed without crawling to the bathroom. I was 28 years old, and I thought, oh my god, my aunt is right. I I'm aging right now. This is it. It's never going to get any better. It struck me, plantar fasciitis, hmm. Inf inflammation, inflamed fascia. Could inflamed fascia be causing me pain? And if that's true, there's no exercise for that. Everything that I knew about the human body really, fascia was really never talked about. They call it like an inactive passive packing material, kind of like the stuff that you get in a UPS box, you chuck in the bucket to get to the good stuff, right? It's like this inert stuff that didn't mean anything. And that's what I believed it was too. And what I can tell you is that connective tissue, and again, collagen, is a renewable resource in your body. And understanding how to tap into it and access it, that's what I've been doing for the last 20 years. And like you said, I mean, MELT is my self-care program. I've got thousands of instructors worldwide, and together we go out and just share a, a technique to help people get out and stay out of chronic pain. So I'm, we're gonna geek out a little bit. I'm gonna give you a little bit more information. So the definition of fascia today, all of the collagenous soft tissue in your body, including the cells that create and maintain the intricate microscopic network, we define as the extracellular matrix. So fascia, I always say, could be considered a neuroelectrochemical superconducting highway for cellular communication and neural communication. So there's also a lot of changing terminology. Maybe you've heard of these words. Every single one of these words means the exact same thing. It just depends upon if you're cutting it with a blade or you're looking at it with a microscope. But we're talking about the same molecular components in your body. It is a stability system. And listen to that word I'm saying, system. We call connective tissue connective tissue because it's connecting things. But it's a system. Fascia, what I'm basically saying is that fascia has a relationship to cellular lifespan, which is a very delicate way of saying aging. Uh, neural signaling, which is sensory motor control, your function, how you move, how you adapt to your environments. And electrochemical adaptations, and that includes metabolism and your hormones. And so on a macroscopic level, if, if fascia loses its supportive qualities, you're going to lose space. Your posture is going to start to decline because bones are managed by the tension created by the collagen network. And I'm going to say it again, connective tissue, your collagen network, is the stability system of your body. What's more important is on a micro level what's happening. Our cells are reactive to the environment that they live in as well, okay? So cells need a, a strong, solid, mechanical environment. If connective tissue loses its fluid perfusion, it literally is what's accelerating your aging process, is a lack of cellular communication. So again, connective tissue is a three-dimensional fluid-based architectural matrix. Under your skin, it literally looks like flexible scaffolding, okay? And, and it is inseparable. In a human body, 
It is, collagen's infused through everything. There's no separation, skin to bone, head to toe, it's everywhere. And it is a dynamic system that is adapting and reacting because the cells of fascia are also very reactive. Collagen is kind of like a superconductor. So if you pull or compress in your body, the tissue is gonna react and adapt to those things. Now, if you compress or pull on fascia for long periods of time, that's the very thing that causes this dehydration effect, this lack of fluid perfusion. When do you compress and cause tension to the backside of your body for long periods of time? You're sitting. Stand up for a second. Oh my gosh. And as long as you're standing, do you guys want to assess if your nervous system is having trouble identifying where your joints are. Do you guys remember me mentioning this? I'll mention it again later. You want to do a quick assessment for yourself? This one's simple. Raise one of your arms up nice and high. Okay, so don't look around. You're going to close your eyes in a second. Just let me show you. So you're going to close your eyes, and with the tip of your index finger, I want you to reach up and touch the tip of your finger. Close your eyes. One, two, three. Reach up and touch it. Uh-huh. Ah, okay, yeah, I saw it comes to you. Okay, so now try it on the other side. Reach the other arm up. Same thing. Close your eyes. One, two, three. Boom. Touch it. Okay, so here's what I saw. You guys can sit down. You did awesome with that. So some of you guys, I saw these things. Okay, I saw a lot of you guys do this. You came really close, and then you just kind of crawled your finger up to the tip, right? So here's the thing. The tip of your finger is attached to you. Why don't you know where it is? It's right on you. It's right there. How come you couldn't find it? If you think of your connective tissue, again, like that river, remember what I said, daily living causes this accumulative stress. Your nervous system is kind of using your joints like a GPS system. Your joints are like satellites. So the thing about fascia and the, the joints is that your nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, the thing I told you about before, in my world, we call it the autopilot. It's the parts of your body that are trying to support, protect, and stabilize you without your voluntary control or your conscious awareness. That system is so good at compensating that if your joints are full of stuck stress and you've got inflammation, you know what your body does? Lowers your metabolism, makes you sleepy, you gotta take a nap at two o'clock. Uh, it, it tricks your brain. It gives you cloudy brain, all of a sudden you're like, eh, I don't really feel like doing anything today. You get unmotivated. It's all part of the same system because that's what our autopilot does, is it just downgrades us when our fascia isn't supple and supportive. It's just what it does. It can't pep you up. It just brings us down. So the autonomic nervous system, the autonomic nervous system is broken down into three regulators, a stress, repair, and digestion. They call that the sympathetic, parasympathetic, and enteric nervous system. Sympathetic, that's your stress regulator. Everything is stress in this day and age. I'm stressed to your nervous system right now. You guys being here and sitting on those chairs is stressful. Not being in your own bed, your, your husbands, your wives, your dogs, your cats, your kids, your job, all of this stuff is stress in your life. You can't get rid of it. And don't think that you're going to make enough money and you're going to move to Tahiti and all of your stress will be gone because get this, there'll be a hurricane, it'll knock your house down, you'll have stress all over again. It's going to happen. You can't get rid of stress. It's part of your life. But the parasympathetic regulator, you can actually boost that. And the thing about our stress in our lives today is we're so inundated with stress that we actually have a hard time balancing out between stress and repair. So this is what we call the easy zone. Stress in comes to your body, your nervous system's got to react and adjust, the parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest, tries to go into action, and it tries to bring ourselves back. But again, in this day and age, we are so stress-dominated that our nervous system actually gets used to being in a high stress state. And some people say, I like my stress. I like it. I like it when I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. They're always on their phone. They go on their vacations and they're on their phone still. And I'm like, there's an ocean. Doesn't matter. I got to go ahead and put it on Instagram. Everybody's got to know I'm having a good time. <laughs> it's stress. It's stress. We're constantly inundated with stress. And here's the thing. And, and Mark's, Mark has heard me talk about this, is that the thing is, if you in a waking state are constantly inundated with stress. Guess where rest and repair is actually dominant? When is it? When you're sleeping. And what's happening to your sleep? Are you all sleeping eight hours? Sound? Yes, yeah, like I don't even know what she's talking about, right? So 
the thing is, at night, if you don't get cellular repair, and that's where cellular repair and fascia is dominant, you wake up the next morning with a backlog of stuck stress, and that's how your nervous system starts to break down, and that can cause all sorts of effects. And this was the image that I showed you today, is that all of a sudden, you start getting symptoms that seem completely unrelated to your joints. It's not that my joints are achy. All of a sudden, I'm bloated. I, I'm gassy. I can't digest milk anymore. What's happening? I could eat ice cream all day long. Now, I'm like stinky, and my I've got BO and not, I don't like anybody, I'm grumpy, I've got mental, mental unclarity, I, I, I feel depressed, I'm anxious all the time, i got a lack of energy at 2 o'clock, but again, at night you try to fall asleep and you can't, and you're waking up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. That is showing you that your autonomic nervous system is actually stressed out. It can't rest you anymore. Now here's the thing, if all of these, and some of you guys said these are familiar symptoms, aren't they? A lot of them, right? So the thing that's really happening is that the fluids in fascia are being pulled from fascia into the lymphatic system. And the lymph, these pre-lymphatic channels, are actually drawing what are called interstitial fluids in, from fascia into your lymphatic system. And your lymph is what kind of jump, dumps waste and toxins out of your body. So fascia does also play a role in waste elimination. So if we never do anything to just help our stress and repair, remember that third thing I mentioned, the enteric nervous system? That's your gut regulator. If you can't rest and repair, the thing that really gets impacted is your gut. So we think that bloating and inflammation originates in the gut, I'm going to argue that point and say, no, it does not. It starts in your fascial system. And as the fascial system loses its supple and supportive qualities, the autonomic nervous system downgrades in regulation, you can't rest and repair anymore, and your gut microbiomes start to drop down also. All of a sudden, everything is going haywire in your body. You have an inflammatory response, and it doesn't matter what you eat, nothing is budging. And that, again, means that we've got to really look at the environment that you're living in, not just the one outside of you, but the one inside. So applying the living body model, we have this thing we call the four hours protocol, reconnect, rebalance, rehydrate, and release. Reconnect techniques are assessment techniques. We spend a lot of time becoming more aware you want people to become more aware of where they are right now and feel the changes that you want them to make, yeah? And after you've done any of the stuff again, you want people to go back in and reassess what they feel. Rebalancing, these are neurological techniques, ways to challenge your autopilot, to find your center of gravity. We use these softballs on our hands and on our feet to help our nervous system figure out where on earth has your center of gravity gone from your extremities. That's what it's doing. And then we have these rehydrate techniques. Remember what I said? Connective tissue is reactive to two things, tension and compression. And we use these soft rollers. How many of you guys have used a foam roller before? Yeah, and they tell you, you find these really smart people, iron yourself like a shirt, and when you find a lumpy area, dig it out like you'll win an award for inflicting pain on your body, right? But here's the thing, if you're in pain, don't cause pain to get out of pain. It doesn't even make any sense. But if you learn kind of like what I said, working fluid into a sponge, if you think of connective tissue kind of like a sponge, if you work that fluid into the sponge in a proper way through gentle tension and compression, you can then create fluid perfusion through the entire matrix, and that will also help with heart rate variability, vagal tone, stress reduction, and most certainly it'll help you to feel better in your joints. There's no doubt about it. So these compression techniques are real gentle, very focused. So again, instead of ironing yourself like a shirt, maybe go to YouTube and type in melt method and see if maybe this resonates with any of you. There's even techniques you can do with a towel. I'm not trying to sell you on my products or my thing. I'm just trying to explain to you how that you can do things for yourself to make yourself feel better. Keep that message with people, okay? I'm just telling you, it works, right? Yeah, yeah. So again, the rehydrate techniques, these are fascial pull. Instead of stretching a muscle, you want to find myofascial meridians, tension throughout your whole body. You actually feel more in fascia. There's more sensory nerves in fascia than there are in your muscles. But by six times. Six times more sensory nerves in your fascia than there are in your muscles. And again, we also had that re release, decompressing your body from day to day. So again, don't let stress accumulate in your body. Take care of yourselves first. Make you the living model for your business, right? And I think that's what I want to end on, is that it starts with you guys. So I hope if what I've done is give you guys a little bit of hope in your own bodies, that you have the ability within you to change your life and change how you feel and change what you think. And if you just stay present with it, I'm telling you, your future is going to be bright. So I hope this helps you guys with your body. I appreciate you guys for being here.